Okay, good morning, composition three. Um, this, this lecture is coming to you uh, a little bit late. There's a reason for it though, not because I wasn't going to uh, record on Friday, it's because I uh, was behind with the grading. So <clears throat> I uh, caught up last night and uh, checked everybody's outline. So first thing we gotta talk about <clears throat> is the essay outline. <clears throat> there were two parts, right? Uh, you have to narrow your topic and <clears throat> write the thesis. And then you had to complete an essay outline. So I want to talk about how that went first. <clears throat> um, this might take most of the class and uh, that's fine. We, this is week 12, right? Um, but I've, in, I've changed the title of this lecture to general to specific because this is one of the key problems that's going on. So um, out of the entire class, <clears throat> only one student got an A plus and two students got an A or three. Um, there's potential for more of you. There is a curve, of course, in this class, right? So uh, there's only only five, only four or five students can get an A plus in this class. That's all I'm allowed to give. Uh, I would like to give more, but I can't. But on this assignment, it was not a problem um, because <clears throat> there were there were too many issues. Um, some relate mostly relating to the instructions. So let let me start. Let me start with uh, the basic stuff first, okay? So basically, you have to take a topic and you had to narrow that topic down. Uh, some people just didn't do that. I mean, one student actually put a table about what, when, where, how, why, right? The, the que if, you, if I have uh, five questions after you write your thesis, then their thesis is not very good. It's, you should be specifically pointing towards an argument and not making a general statement about climate change. Climate change is a topic, not a narrowed down topic, right? If you say climate change is a problem and it's, um, or climate change is happening and it's causing an air pollution problem for people, that, that's not a narrowed topic. That's the, that's the entire world, like all the time. You couldn't have a more general topic than climate change hurting people. That's an original open topic. You have to narrow it down to anything, disease in an area, Korea, you know, Canada, um, high school, or old people, young people, something, right? Animals, are we talking about air pollution? Are we talking about water pollution? Are we talking about plastic? <clears throat> Are we talking about energy? Um, you can't talk about all these things. That that uh, thesis doesn't. That's a section of research in a library. Like that's a whole floor of a library. Not not even a book, right? If I was searching for something in the library and I put your thesis into the library, I would get like five thousand books. That's I've been saying I I didn't want to repeat myself, but I think I have to. That's the problem. That's not a thesis. When you type in a thesis that's specific, there should be like one title because it's specific. That's the point. Okay, let me give you some examples. <clears throat> um, not, not picking on anybody. I'm not going to say who the student was, but here's, here's one. Um, we should accept the coexistence of coronavirus on a daily Okay, <clears throat> first of all, there's a, you're missing, uh, there's a grammar problem there. We should accept <clears throat> coexistence with coronavirus on a daily basis, okay? That should be the statement. So there's a grammar mistake there, um, <clears throat> but that's gonna happen. But you should try and fix your thesis statement and make it grammatically correct. But what's missing there <clears throat> is the reason. Because what? 
Now, I'm not going to fix people's thesis statements. You have to do it yourself. That's just an example. But that particular student um, provided a lot of support, but the support was so wide. Uh, in particular, in one paragraph, the student was going to talk about economic damage, social damage, and educational damage. In one paragraph, you're going to do that? Out of like many paragraphs, you have several body paragraphs and one paragraph is going to talk about all that. One of those things, economic damage related to coexisting with the coronavirus on a daily basis, um, <clears throat> you can focus it further on people who are adults, employment age or something like that, or related again, related to a country. Um, of course, we know it's coronavirus, so it's this. You don't have to write the date. Uh, that's not necessary. But lo locating your topic and specific things is what you need to do. So that's just an example. All of you need to do that, though. Only <clears throat> there was really only one thesis out of fifteen students who had a proper thesis. Let's pick another one. <clears throat> Global economic growth has a tremendous adverse effect on the climate. Yeah. What is the effect? And are you going to talk about global, global economic growth? Are you telling me you're going to research about India and Canada and Brazil? You're going to get all of that research together? I think that's too much work, isn't it? Yeah. That... that that topic could, I think I responded something like you could write 8,000 pages on that. That could be like a United Nations team looking that up. That's not appropriate. Most people have this problem. This, you did not narrow down the topic at all. <clears throat> As the world gets more and more modern, Pollution presents a serious problem. Well, that's an interesting comment about being more modern. Does that mean technologically developed? Or are we talking about economic development, political development, advancements in social ways? I'm not, not sure exactly what modern means because, you know, we use that word loosely in many different ways. But what's, what's, the, pro what's the problem that pollution is causing? Death? Illness? Difficult supply chain problems like you know that one of the economic problems these days since people keep coming up with you know problems pick a problem what is the problem people dying people are afraid to go outside uh, protest because of anti-vaccination movements and anti-masking uh, difference political differences because people believe that they should be free to make choices and the, the government is imposing these restrictions on them uh, these are, there can be social problems, there can be economic problems, there can be education problems, like the students said in their support. Pick, pick one, pick one and, you know, talk about it, right? Talk about the effect on, you know, education of, of high school students, right? What's it like to write the synonym when you have to deal with all this coronavirus stuff at the same time? That can be written in three pages. Remember, it's three to four pages. That's, that's a really short paper. I know you think it's long, but it's not. It's not. <clears throat> you can easily get through all this stuff. Now, you're supposed to have at least one reference, so there should be some research in there. Yeah. <clears throat> um, we already did this. The difference between fact and opinion as well. You... You use facts and statistics, right, and details to support. This is, right, this is in your body. This is to support your argument. It's not the, it's not the thesis or the topic, right? You can't say in the 1980s there was an economic depression, right? Or after World War II... Um, capitalism spread all over the world and uh, the Cold War started. 
that that's not an argument that happened right that it some there was a, some there was a student who wrote an entire paragraph as their thesis if this statement is one sentence that's specific you must follow the instructions so i don't think don't be too disappointed by your score because the range is from 130 to 180 the the highest score to the lowest score and it's normal for people to make um, mistakes on the essay outline that's why we're doing it um, that's why we did it so that i could see so all of the all of your grades are there um, everybody has their problems even the students who got over i would say 170 to 180 means you did a pretty good job but <clears throat> even those students had something to fix everybody had something to fix it's not because i'm not being generous it's because this is the main point of the class and if you don't get this then i failed as well so you have to get this concept of how to write a thesis uh, if you're going to pursue academics or research privately or publicly as a teacher uh, as a as a student graduate student you got to get this otherwise you can't do it right these are these are basic skills that are needed there are people in graduate school who can't do their work can't do their homework and struggle it's partly because they never developed these skills um, so you know it's difficult but you got to look at it and you got to think carefully is this connected to what I'm writing in my paragraphs uh, in my body paragraphs, one student had that issue that so there was a, a claim in the thesis <clears throat> about pollution, but the the paragraphs didn't follow that. They went specifically into, uh, I believe it was plastic. It was, you know, there was a thesis that didn't mention plastic at all, and then the entire you know, uh, structure was organized well, but the headings and the topic sentences were related to plastic and plastic was not mentioned in the thesis statement that if you're going to um, say something, uh, I, I, if I'm remembering this, I remember this one in particular, the argument was about um, multi-use, uh, reusable multi-use things, which is a good point, right? Uh, but the, the thesis talked about a certain thing. And then in the support, it was related to like using a tumbler. But in the thesis, there was something about delivery, like uh, protecting the environment by not having packaging. But you can't get juice delivered in a tumbler, can you? If your thesis is talking about deliveries, and your one of your paragraphs is not talking about deliveries at all. That's like the Swiss paragraph. Remember the Swiss paragraph? The problem with that was they mentioned things at the beginning of the paragraph, and then they never came up. That you, there's not just that student. I just remember that one in particular because the it was a good outline, except that there was there was these uh, points that didn't logically connect to the thesis. So that has to, there you go, Switzerland. Remember, if you dream of traveling to a country with beautiful mountains, delicious food, wonderful places to go sightseeing and polite people, you should visit Switzerland. And then they talk about languages, right? Okay, that could be true. That is good. Uh, that's interesting, right? Um, the fact they have, have uh, they, it borders on five countries and there's four official languages. But what does that relate to? Politeness, sightseeing, delicious food, or beautiful mountains? It, it doesn't. It's just related to the overall topic, but not to the topic statement. That's no good. So same thing with the, you know, um, reduction of plastic. Good. Uh, don't use so much packaging and deliveries. Fine. If you say that in your thesis, then everything has to be connected to that, right? If the point is you need to reduce plastic in by doing this and this, right? Taking personal responsibility 
and reducing your use of plastic, that fits. But if you say delivery, packaging, and then in the support paragraph, you say, uh, walk around with a tumbler, right? <clears throat> that's not related to delivery. That's related to your, you know, you can go to the coffee shop and you can get the drink put in your tumbler, but you can't get the stuff delivered to your house in reusable packaging. Um, although, to be fair, this would work. You know, Coupon, I've seen Coupon drops off stuff and they've got like a insulated, you know, box and then you take the stuff out of it and then you put the insulated box outside your door and they pick it up. That fits. That's good. Multi-use, reusing, if that's what you're talking about. So you know what I'm saying? Narrow it down. The, there was nothing wrong with that thesis in the way it was written. It just has to match the body paragraphs. So that, that student knows who they are. That's what you gotta do. Everybody's situation, I'm not gonna go through everybody's paper and um, uh, another thing was that some people wrote a lot. Some people wrote almost nothing. Um, I'm tempted just to take points away uh, when you don't, I mean, I have to, I have to write. I have to give you a lower score. If one person writes three full pages and their paper is almost done and you give me like five sentences, that's it. That's just lack of effort. I can't tell if your paper's any good if you just do that, right? You don't, you have a general thesis and you have three sentences that are about something with no detail and then you're done. That's it? That's not gonna, I can't tell if your paper's gonna be good or not just because of the, there's a lack of detail and um, organization might be fine, but like you have to make a better effort than that. Now the people who went, went a little bit too far, you know who you are. Um, the, I think the, qui the quality of writing is good, uh, but I can't, as I explained to one student, um, these are complete paragraphs. I can't tell you if the paragraphs are good. That's like telling you you're getting an A before you got an A. I, I can't tell one student, oh, this, these paragraphs are really good. Um, they're well connected and this, this will make a great essay. Don't change anything. I, I can't do that because that's not fair to the other students. I've already talked about the thesis statements um, specifically from different students without naming names. If you want to talk to me about the thesis, you can email me, but the rest of the paper, you have to handle yourself. So when it came to reading, you know, um, people's really developed outline, it's not really an outline. What, what some people did is, is a, a draft, right? When you write full paragraphs, you, with topic sentences and concluding sentences, and you hand it to me, you're, that's a draft. I didn't ask for that. So there are these people that wrote one sentence, and then there's these people who wrote paragraphs that were like 20 sentences long. The, the gap was huge. So uh, that's not a problem, but that again, that's not following the instructions. Um, you should have written a few sentences that gave me, pointed me towards um, what your point is. I like it though. Uh, those of you who wrote uh, complete paragraphs, some of those paragraphs look like they're ready to go. You have to decide though. I'm not telling you who you are and which paragraphs are good. You're gonna have to look at them and say, does this need improvement? Is this connected to my thesis? Do I need to fix my thesis or do I need to fix my paragraphs? Um, in most people's cases, it's the support is quite good. The, the writing, the drafting, right? The draft that you did was good. Uh, the, I was, um, I, I enjoyed reading, previewing papers, but again, that wasn't really the point. The point was, is your thesis good? Is the structure and organization there? Is everything specific, specific and do the supporting sentences relate to the thesis? That's all I wanted to see. This is kind of just like a skeleton, right? Some people were drawing like half the body or more. So uh, I'm not looking at that fleshed out um, paper. I'm not supposed to look at that yet. Uh, so like I said, 
the probably the strongest point amongst all of you uh, are the people that did write too much. That writing looks good, like I said. Uh, fluent, organized writing with um, some points. Again, though, if your thesis was too general, that affected your writing too, right? That's one of the reasons a thesis is so useful is that maybe the paragraphs you wrote to support the paragraph, if you started out with something really general, then your paragraphs, they need to be narrowed down too. That's why you do this first. That's why you do that before you write the thesis, you narrow down the topic. Many of you skipped that step. So this is the most important thing in a class other than the exam, but the, you know, the exam is worth 30% and this, this paper is worth uh, 20 or 25. I have to look that up actually. <clears throat> but um, we did a lot of, we did a lot of work this semester. There are only two things left. You have to write your comparative paragraph and you have to write your paper and that's it. I, and remember, we didn't have a midterm. So I know, um, We've done quite a bit of writing, um, but you know, I want I wanted you to get the develop as much as possible. I I have to say that I expect better on the essay than what I saw in the essay outline. Some people didn't make enough effort. Some people didn't follow the instructions. I think all of you can do better. Um, as I said, there was only a, a few students who really followed the instructions carefully and they also had their own problems too. So please look at my feedback. It took me a long time to check and it took me a long time to write um, comments to you. So everybody has a grade, everybody has a comment as of now. So uh, if you wanna talk to me, um, sometimes it's better not just to email, but to talk, actually talk, you know? I found when I had problems with my papers that um, something that would clear my mind about, you know, how to approach the, my topic was to visit my professor. Um, one, one or two students said, oh, professor, I'll come and visit you this semester. Nobody visited me. I, I don't blame you because the coronavirus numbers are going up and, um, you know, if you're not on campus for other classes or where you're not in the dormitory of course it's not you're not going to come and visit but you can uh, I like I like talking to people so you can uh, you can make a zoom appointment with me that's fine or if you want to drop by make an appointment though because uh, first of all I mean I'm in my office a lot but you know um, sometimes I'm recording and if somebody knocks on my door it's really annoying I should have a sign uh, to put on my door since Corona started that, you know, now, now recording, please do not disturb. Uh, but usually nobody visits me anyway. So, okay. <clears throat> At this point, I would always say, is there any questions? <clears throat> but when I was on Zoom, I did that and nobody said anything anyway. So this is like real class. Is there any questions? No, nobody wants to ask questions. Okay, good. Moving on. Um, <clears throat> On page 50, <clears throat> so there is, we can't do everything. This is week 12. I hope this is week 12. I get really confused these days about what week it is, but I believe we only have two weeks of class left. That's it. Next week is the 19th. And then, is that right? What am I talking about? Sorry, the 19th. <laughs> 19th is already <laughs> passed. Today is supposed to be the 19th. Uh, 26th and then the 3rd. And that's, that's it. Yeah, there's a, there's a makeup week. Um, we, I have to decide. I, I have to talk to the English department about what day we're having our exam. But we only have, um, we only have those two classes left, 13, 14 and then the exam, that's it. So we can't uh, finish the book, we're only on chapter six. Um, <clears throat> there, are some, there are some good uh, suggestions at the bottom of 43, at the end of, um, 
at the end of the chapter. I don't think last class I mentioned them, but um, as I said, the comparative structure is something that you do. Not, I mean, it's an essay form, possible essay form, but it's a, even more common just in a daily life decision-making capacity, right? You just, you just look at things around you and you compare them all the time. And sometimes the things are very similar. Let's take a funny example, uh, or not so funny, depending on your sense of humor. But what if we're talking about um, two guys you're interested in? This is, this is like a romantic comedy situation or like, you know, sitcom situation. It's like there's two guys, you know, and they, they're both men and they're, they're both a similar age. And uh, one of them's tall, one of them's taller, and one of them's nicer. And one of them has a, I don't know, better job. We'll just say something like that, makes more money. One of them has no job and the other one has a job. That's a pretty big difference. Um, or vice versa, of course, you could be talking about women if you're interested in women. Woman, woman, man, 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 woman, whatever. There's two ladies, one has short hair, one has long hair, one is tall, one is short. One is, you know, younger than the other. One is uh, working, the other one, you know, you can compare on, uh, they're, they're both, uh, in a sense, similar type thing, a person who you're interested in dating and you have to compare them. This is something you do unconsciously. And uh, don't do this with people. It's not a good idea to like compartmentalize people and like check off priorities. I think that's a very bad way to go about dating. But I'm just saying, this is just something that we do all the time. We, we unconsciously compare um, people all the time. Uh, I would never do that to students. So, you know, in the human capacity, you shouldn't do that. Even even when it comes to, you know, comparing pets or something. You know, I, I've had uh, five dogs in my life. Am I going to rank the dogs and then write down the criteria and say, well, this is my favorite dog and this is my next favorite dog in my life? I'm not going to do that. Um, but if you're going to make a purchase, for example, or you're going to go travel, you know, and you want to travel to another country, and you have a choice between Vietnam and Thailand, there's a good opportunity to sit down and look at, you know, very carefully the amount of money that it costs, um, how far away it is, uh, what the food is like, uh, and compare the accommodation, et cetera, et cetera, right? So they, they have on page 43 some suggestions. Advantages and disadvantages of taking online dis distance education. Distance education versus in person. We can all relate to that in the coronavirus age. Uh, introverts versus extroverts, that's a tough one. Uh, I don't recommend that. Advantages of living with a roommate or not. That sounds reasonable. Gas power versus electric vehicles. Okay, right? Uh, <clears throat> getting more specific and saying, you know, Tesla uh, versus Hyundai or something like that would be better. Uh, always better if you can narrow it down and make it more specific. Are you really, in reality, are you going to compare gas-powered vehicles and electric vehicles? Maybe if you're an engineer, you will. But uh, if you're an English major, you're pro probably more interested in actually buying a gas-powered versus electric vehicle, right? So maybe don't even take Hyundai and Tesla. Don't take both of them. Um, just do Hyundai because Hyundai does both. Hyundai has gas-powered vehicles that you can compare to electric. Tesla just has electric vehicles. So when you're comparing Tesla electric vehicles to Hyundai electric vehicles and Hyundai gas powered, it's not really balanced. That's not a balanced framework. Um, so think about these things, right? This is why we do the class to make you more analytical. Think critically, you know, and organize yourself. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Is there nothing, there's something else? Oh, the, yes, the next chapter, paragraphs and graphs, about graphs and charts. We're gonna skip that one. That's actually two reasons. One is it's, um, it's not in the old book. I don't know if anybody still, I saw that some students had upgraded to the new book, um, even though they had, the, had gotten the old one. I appreciate that, but there might be a couple students uh, still using the old one and the old one doesn't have this this is for once this book has something new um, 
and uh, this this is not really within the scope of what I would teach anyway. So um, I probably will be skipping this chapter in the future as well, but not completely. I think page 50 uh, and page 51 are still relevant to our class. So general to specific again, right? General statements. Most of my time online is spent gaming. In fact, I spend three times as many hours gaming as I do in all other categories. Specific. Okay. <clears throat> you're going you're gonna to have to relate uh, the general statement to the specific information. But as I said to you, we, we don't want to just keep the statement general. We want it, it to contain more because this is really, we're moving into essays and this paragraph, this uh, book doesn't get as specific as it should. I don't know why it doesn't, but it doesn't. It can be difficult to put the significance of a piece of numerical information and describe the information in the same sentence. So this is not talking about a thesis, right? This is talking about in your support paragraph. This is how you put them together. Most of my time online is spent gaming. That's the general statement. In fact, I spend three times as many hours gaming as I do. That's a, a, a fact, that's a measurement. Right? So you've got general statement, measurements. That's for the support paragraph. That's for the body paragraph, right? That's, that's how you're lining up your support for the essay in general. That's not your thesis. This is just something that's connected. So if, if you're this person, and I said, you, you don't want to use a personal pronoun. Several students did in their thesis. No, I will not allow that. I don't accept that. In your body paragraph, if you want to use a personal anecdote to support your thesis, that is okay. I must be clear about that, okay? So, it says, most of my time, possessive, in fact, I, personal pronoun, spend three times. That's giving an example. That's not a thesis. The thesis is, <clears throat> um, let's just use Koreans. Let's make a good thesis, okay? Uh, Korean middle school students get exposed to computer games at a young age and it consumes too much of their time uh, in relation to their studies. Okay, we've got middle school students, Korea, uh, games, the consequences is loss, waste of wasting time relative to their study time. That's what I want, something like that, okay? Example. This example supports that statement easily, right? They're connected. I just made a thesis for this st statement, okay? So that's how you do it, that right there, I don't know if I'll put this on the exam or not, but possibly. So it's not homework, but pay attention to page 50. Page 50 has got general statements with specific information that support that general statement. So. I'm not saying you can never make general statements, but there one student decided to talk about capitalism and like capitalism is a, an enormous system, right? Like when you say capitalism, that's like saying medievalism. That's like saying uh, Chinese, Chinese imperialism. It, it's a huge system. It, it goes for hundreds of years and it's very, very complex. That shouldn't, you can't really write a three-page paper on capitalism, right? If capitalism is causing some problem, which is, I think, what the thesis was for that student, then you're going to have to narrow it down to something more specific than an entire economic system. In fact, I'm not an economics professor, so I'm not going to argue uh, with you about the subtleties of capitalism, but you have to choose something specific, right? Even like the free market, Okay, or, or um, you know, business enterprise, entrepreneurship, um, private versus public spending. Like, these are things within capitalism um, that if you use that word, that's fine, but that shouldn't be your main point. So lots of people, their scope. Uh, I know I said the disaster in the 21st century, but uh, somebody else talked about the conflict in the Middle East. That is, that conflict may be ongoing, but it goes back at least 4,000 years, maybe 5,000, 6,000 years. That's fundamentally why it keeps going because people have been fighting 
at the crossroads of Asia and Africa and Europe since the beginning of civilization. That's the biggest topic you can possibly choose, is where people have been fighting forever since they existed. Narrow it down to something. So talk about political problem or talk about Syria or talk about Iraq or talk about Israel, you know, as a Jewish state surrounded by Islamic states and how that causes tension. Narrow it down. Don't leave it open like that. Okay, <clears throat> so next class we'll do chapter seven. All right, so please check your individual feedback. I'm not trying to be discouraging. Actually, I'm trying to be encouraging. Uh, I think the writing was good. The, the uh, specific arguments were not. That's one of the reasons the essay, uh, the essay outline was written. So please take a look at your own and try and, and uh, refine it and follow the instructions better. And then you'll end up being rewarded on your paper. Okay, questions can be directed to my email. But if you have some serious questions, perhaps um, email me and make an appointment so we can talk. Uh, otherwise, good luck. And uh, make sure you do your comparison paragraph because that is also due. All right, that's it. I'll upload this uh, toot sweet. Uh, see you next week, next Friday.